The ground was cold, wet. I opened my eyes. Giant ferns towered over me. Where was I? My heart pounded like a drum. This wasn't my backyard. This was a jungle. A prehistoric jungle. Panic surged through me. Towering trees blotted out the sun. Vines as thick as my arm hung like macabre decorations. I spotted a backpack nearby. Hope flickered. Maybe I could find a way out of this mess. I rummaged through the backpack. Inside, I found a water bottle, a compass, and a first aid kit. Relief washed over me. Someone knew I was here. But who? And how did I get here? My thoughts were interrupted by a rustling in the undergrowth. A low growl sent shivers down my spine. Something was coming. Something big. A creature emerged from the ferns. It was like a dog, but bigger, much bigger. Its scales shimmered like emeralds. Sharp teeth poked out from its jaw. A dogosaurus. I froze, my breath catching in my throat. The dogosaurus sniffed the air, its eyes fixed on me. I didn't dare move a muscle. One wrong move and I could become its next meal. Slowly, cautiously, I reached out my hand. The dogosaurus tilted its head, its tail wagging tentatively. It inched closer, sniffing my outstretched hand. Then, it licked me. Relief flooded through me. It was friendly. Or at least, not immediately hostile. I took a step back, my heart still racing. The dogosaurus followed, nudging my hand with its snout. It wanted to play. I couldn't help but smile. Even in this strange, prehistoric world, there was still a sense of wonder. But I knew I couldn't stay here forever. I had to find a way out. The ground trembled. The dogosaurus whined, its ears flattened against its head. I felt it too. A vibration that seemed to come from the very core of the earth. Then, I heard it. A thunderous roar. A herd of zebrasauruses came crashing through the jungle. Their striped hides blended with the shadows, making them even more terrifying. They were a blur of hooves and horns, their eyes wild with panic. I dove out of the way as the herd thundered past. The dogosaurus barked, snapping at their heels but quickly giving up the chase. The ground shook and I knew I had to get out of the open. I ran, my lungs burning. The jungle blurred around me. Vines tore at my clothes. I didn't dare slow down. Not with those things on my tail. Finally, I broke free of the jungle. Ahead of me lay a beach. The sand was white and pristine, the water a dazzling turquoise, but I had no time to admire the view. The Zebrasauruses weren't far behind. Section 4 Bizarre Beasts of the Prehistoric Coast I sprinted across the sand, my heart pounding in my chest. The Zebrasauruses were gaining on me. I could hear their heavy breaths behind me. I had to find somewhere to hide. I spotted a cave at the base of a cliff. It was a long shot but it was my only hope. I scrambled inside, the darkness swallowing me whole. I could hear the zebrasauruses thundering past, their frustrated cries echoing off the cave walls. I collapsed onto the cold, damp floor, my body trembling with exhaustion. I was safe, for now. But I was trapped. I had no idea where I was or how to get back home. As my eyes adjusted to the dim light, I realized I wasn't alone. Strange creatures huddled in the shadows. A catasaurus, its feline grace combined with reptilian scales, hissed at me. A crabosaurus, a crab the size of a small car, scuttled sideways, its claws snapping. This jungle was a menagerie of the impossible. Section 5. The Swanodactyl's Domain 
A forest of wonders and dangers. I emerged from the cave, the sun warm on my skin. The beach stretched before me, empty and serene. The zebrasauruses were gone. I was safe, for now. But I couldn't stay on the beach forever. I needed to find civilization, or at least a way to signal for help. I turned away from the ocean and plunged back into the jungle. The air was thick with the scent of damp earth and strange flowers. Giant insects buzzed lazily through the undergrowth. A flock of swanodactyls soared overhead, their graceful wings casting fleeting shadows on the forest floor. I pushed through the dense foliage, my heart pounding with every rustle and snap. I didn't know what dangers lurked in this prehistoric world, but I was determined to survive. A chorus of croaks drew my attention to a nearby pond. Frogosauruses, their amphibian bodies covered in iridescent scales, leapt from lily pad to lily pad. They were strangely beautiful, their eyes glowing like embers in the fading light. Section 6 it was all a dream. Back to reality. The chase was on again. I scrambled through the undergrowth, adrenaline coursing through my veins. This time, it was a pack of velociraptors, their eyes gleaming with primal hunger. I could hear their claws scraping on the forest floor, getting closer. The jungle seemed to conspire against me. Thorns tore at my skin. Vines tripped me. I stumbled and fell, my breath rasping in my throat. The velociraptors were upon me. I had nowhere left to run. I closed my eyes, bracing myself for the end. But instead of sharp teeth, I felt a strange weightlessness. I was falling. Then I woke up. I was in my bed, my sheets twisted around me. Sunlight streamed through my window. The jungle, the dinosaurs. It had all been a dream. A vivid, terrifying dream. Relief washed over me, leaving me weak and shaken. I sat up in bed, my heart still racing. It had been so real. The sights, the sounds, even the smells. I could still feel the jungle air on my skin. I got out of bed and walked over to my window. The world outside looked normal. Cars honked. People went about their day, but a part of me, a small, secret part, couldn't shake the feeling that I had been somewhere else. Somewhere wild and wonderful and terrifying. Somewhere that existed only in my dreams.